Hey everybody, it's Teresa. Welcome to my channel. I'm going to make two necklaces today and a pair of earrings. And I'm going to use some of the beads and findings that came in my most recent GVC's treasure bag. I got the amber and aqua one. She put out two different colors this time and I got the amber and aqua one. I'll put a link in the corner of this video and in the description box below to the video I did where I opened the bag and went over everything that came in it. It's just, a, her bags are always so beautiful and they're such an amazing value. There's so many beads and findings in there. And they sell out really, really quickly because it's not a subscription you can sign up for. She just puts out a limited number of bags about once every other month. The best way to know when she's about to release a bag is to go to her website and get on her email notification list and that way she'll send you an email a couple of days before she's about to release a bag to let you know that she's about to release one so you can be ready and hopefully get yourself one if you want one. I'll put a link to her website in the description box below. I'll also put a link to her YouTube channel. She comes out with all kinds of amazing videos after she releases a bag using the beads and that are that's in the bag and different projects so I'll, I'll put a link to her YouTube channel in the description box below too this is just the stuff for my first necklace that I've got out here right now although they're both going to be really similar in these three trays I've got beads from the six by five millimeter aqua mix rondelle beads and I've separated out the colors and then in here I've got the 16 by 22 by 6 millimeter porcelain and golden alloy heart pendant that came in the bag and I've got a bail that I'm going to put that on with a little 4 millimeter jump ring from my stash the bales from my stash too I've got some spacer daisy spacers from my stash I'm going to be using some uh, Durco galvanized gold 11 O's to space out the beads I've got some findings in here I've got a lobster clasp uh, some six millimeter, six, three six millimeter jump rings, one eight millimeter jump ring, uh, a couple of pieces of the chain that came in the box. There were two different kinds. I'm using this that, this that has the double, uh, double links in it. I just really love that chain. <laughs> and I've got a couple of wire guardians and a couple of two by two crimp tubes, and I've got a little piece of extender chain in there. And I've got a ball head pin and one of the little rondelles here that I'm going to hang off the ball head pin as a dangle. I think that's everything in there. My findings for both necklaces are going to be just exactly the same except for the little bead I'm going to hang off the extender chain. Uh, I'm going to be using my soft flex beading wire and fine and this is 21 strand and this is copper. I don't have any gold. I'm not sure if soft flex makes gold. I, I can't seem to find any gold in soft flex and I really like soft flex. I know they make a bunch of colors but I just can't seem to find gold. But it doesn't really matter anyway. You're not going to be able to see the wire once I get all the beads on there anyway. Uh, I've got my bead stopper. I'm going to be using my chain nose pliers, my tweezer pliers, my round nose pliers. Both pairs of my bent chain nose pliers, both pairs of my crimping pliers, both pairs of my cutters. I've already used my memory wire cutters to cut my chain. And I've got my little New Orleans shot glass to put my wires in when I cut them off. I think that's everything. I'll uh, try to find links and put links in the description box to everything that I'm using that didn't come in the box, in the bag. So hold on, let me get some of this out of the way and I'll be back. Okay, I'm going to start on my first necklace now. These are going to be, both of these necklaces are going to be really, really simple, really easy. And the pair of earrings I'm going to make is not going to go with either one of these necklaces. <laughs> but I just wanted to make them, so I'm going to make them. I just had a real day yesterday. I couldn't get anything that I was doing to work and to turn out the way I wanted it to. And I finally decided I was just overthinking it. I was just trying to get too complicated. And so I just decided to try to do something really simple so I come up, came up with a couple of just really super simple and easy necklaces so the first thing I'm going to do is put my pendant on my bail here and I'm just going to open, I got a little four millimeter jump ring here I'm just going to open this and put my pendant on I appear to not have opened that wide enough. 
And I'm going to put it on my little bale here. And close my jump ring back. I might should have used a 6 millimeter jump ring. This is giving me a little trouble, but I think it'll be alright. Make sure to get my jump ring closed back really well. So that's going to be my focal. Now I'm going to go ahead and string up my necklace because I don't want y'all to have to wait while I string up all these little seed beads and things. And when I come back, I'll show you what my pattern is and I'll crimp it. So I'll be back. Okay, I've got my first necklace strung up here and I'll show you what I'm using. All these beads were from the Aqua Mix. And I've got 11 of between all the beads except where I have the daisy spacers. These first three beads are kind of a, I don't know, a cloudy looking aqua that I think maybe has an AB finish on them. They're real pretty. And then uh, there's a darker aqua with the daisy spacers around it. And then I have three that are more opaque aqua beads and a darker one. And then three more just like these up here and a darker aqua one and then three more like these and a darker aqua one and then three more like these up here and a darker aqua one and then I put my bale on here with my pendant and I've got three little seed beads under that bale so that the bale's not hanging directly on the bead stringing wire and then the other side is just exactly the same as this side it's really simple like I said <laughs> I got tired of, tired of trying to do complicated yesterday, so I went really simple. <laughs> so now I'm going to crimp it. So I'm going to put on my crimp tube and my wire guardian. I'm going to go down the other channel of my wire guardian. And back into my crimp tube. I hold my wires apart so that they they're not crossed in there because I'm gonna tuck in my little wire card in a little bit here. I'll make sure to keep my wires from being crossed in there because when we crimp, we want both of our little wires to land in their own little channel and they won't do that if they're crossed. Now I'm going to take my crimping pliers and I'm going to use this part with the tooth. I'm going to lay the tooth on top of my crimp tube. Squeeze. And that puts each wire in its own little channel there. Now I'm going to, there are three half circles on each side of these crimping pliers. I'm going to go in the middle one because that's the one for the two by two crimp tubes. I'm going to lay my crimp tube in there and squeeze. Give it a good tight squeeze. Now I'm going to tug. That's good. Now I'm going to use my cutters. I'm going to cut off my extra wire. And now I'm going to cut my wire off my spool. I usually leave it attached. If I know what my design is going to be. Now I'm going to put another crimp tube on and my other wire guardian. I'm going to tuck in a little wire guardian. I think I cut off way too much wire here. <laughs> I leave it attached to the spool on purpose, hoping that it, thinking that maybe it saves me on wire and then uh, I've cut off too much here. I'm going to go down the other channel of my wire guardian, back into my crimp tube, bring my wire through, try to keep it from being crossed in there. Now on this side I like to go through a bead to kind of get my hands out of the way when I'm trying to crimp and to center that last to center my wire guardian over that last bead. Now I'm going to hold on to my wire guardian, make sure my wires are not crossed, and pull my wire through. 
Now I want to make sure that I don't have any gaps in my piece, but uh, I don't want it to be too tight either because if it's too tight it won't drape well. So I usually coil it up like that and that keeps it from being too tight. So now I'm going to take my crimping pliers and use the tooth again. Lay the tooth on top of my crimp tube. Squeeze. Now I'm going to go into the half circle, the little circles in the middle there, like I did before. Lay my crimp tube in there. Squeeze. Give it a good tight squeeze. Now I'm going to tug. That's good. So now I'm going to cut off my extra wire. So there's my first necklace all crimped and everything. So hold on, I'll get my uh, findings and put them on. So I'll be back. Okay, I've got my findings out here now. Uh, this came to uh, about ten and a half inches when I, after I had it crimped and everything. And I've got a, these little pieces of chain are a little over three and a half inches. I think they're about three and three quarters inches, these little pieces of chain are. So I'm going to take one of my six millimeter jump rings. and open it up put this into my chain on you need to make sure you get through both those little links there which is not nearly as hard as i'm making it look <laughs> this side of my necklace on <laughs> okay well it stayed on my chain anyway that's something try to hold on to it this time I'm going to close my jump ring back really well I'm just going to do the same thing on this side. I'm going to take a six millimeter jump ring. Open it up. Put on my chain. Put on this side of my necklace. Close my jump ring back really well. Now I'm going to go down here and take another 6 millimeter jump ring. Just about drop that again. Open it up. Thread on this end of my chain. And put on my lobster clasp and I forgot to say these lobster clasps came in the bag too she had five that were gold and five that were light gold and these are the gold ones not the light gold but the gold ones close my jump ring well I think these are <laughs> I, I usually use 18 gauge jump rings and I think that I must have misordered these I think these must be 16 gauge they're really thick I think I accidentally ordered some 16 gauge one time when I meant to order 18 gauge. Now this is an 18 gauge 8 millimeter jump ring that I'm going to put on this other side for my lobster to clasp onto. I'm going to put a little piece of extender chain on here. This is probably about two inches of extender chain. Make sure I close my jump ring back really well. 
Okay. So now all I need to do is make my little dangle to go off my extender chain. So I've got a ball head pin and one of my little darker aqua beads. I'm going to take my pliers and go to the very tip of the pliers. My head pin's not very straight. Go to the very tip of the pliers. Bend over at a 90 degree angle. Come around those pliers and put them in the crook of the bend. Around those pliers facing me. Bend the wire back until it hits the bead. Rotate the pliers till they're facing the table. Get this part under until it hits the bottom of the tool. Kink the wire back until the loop is centered over the bead. I'm going to open my loop. And thread on my extender chain. Now I'm going to close my loop back. I'm going to take my bent chain those pliers and hold on to my loop. Bring this wire down. Take my other pair of bent chain those pliers and start to wrap. I'm going to make sure you get that first wrap in under the bottom of the loop and not over the top of the bottom of the loop. Just wrap till there's no more room to wrap. Now I'm going to take my cutters and I use a different pair of cutters for craft wire and head pins and eye pins than I do for bead stringing wire. Cut off my extra wire. I'm going to take these crimping pliers and I use the little half circles on each end there to tuck in the burr when I cut off wire. I'm going to tuck in my little burr. So there is my first very easy, very simple necklace. So hold on, I'll get the stuff together for my next one. I'll be back. Okay, I meant to say when I ended that last clip that I was going to go ahead and make my other necklace because I made it exactly the same way as I did that first one. The findings are exactly the same. The only difference is the beads. So I'm, I used the 19 by 25 by 6 millimeter sapphire crystal glass and brass pendant that came in the bag. Uh, these darker aqua beads are from that same uh, mix, aqua mix of the glass rondelle beads. These are a little bit darker aqua than those other dark aquas I used in that other necklace. I thought they went well with that pendant. Matched it well. And then these beads here are the 6 millimeter aqua English cut electroplated glass beads that I thought were just so pretty I couldn't stand it. And, <laughs> and then of course I've got seed beads between all the beads except I have daisy spacers around these dark aqua beads. So that's the only difference. And I used one of the little dark aqua beads and put it off the extender chain there as a dangle. So it's just a whole lot like that other necklace. The beads are just different. So now I'm going to make a little pair of earrings that go with nothing. <laughs> but I just wanted to make them. Because I thought these little hearts here just are so pretty. I can't stand it. They're just so pretty. So I'm going to take a piece of 22 gauge German style wire. And I'm going to take my pliers, go down about an inch and a half. This is probably about a three inch piece of wire, maybe a little over three inches. I'm going to bend over at a 90 degree angle. Take my round nose pliers and put them in the crook of the bend. Round those pliers facing me. Bend the wire back till it hits the tool. Rotate the pliers till they're facing the table. This part under until it hits the bottom of the tool. Kink the wire back until the loop is centered over the wire. And that stands my little piece of wire here almost straight up. Now I'm going to take my bent chain those pliers and hold on to my loop. Bring this wire down. 
uh, wrap the short piece of wire around the long piece of wire about three times. Take my cutters, cut off my extra wire. And this is one of the clear rondelles that was in that same aqua mix. And now I'm going to take my pliers and go to the tip of the pliers. Bend the wire over at a 90 degree angle. Put around those pliers and put them in the crook of the bend. Bend the wire back until it hits the bead. Rotate the pliers till they're fastened the table. Take this part under until it hits the bottom of the tool. Kink the wire back until the loop is centered over the bead. Get my bent chain those pliers and hold on to my loop. Bring this wire down. I'm going to take my other pair of bent chain those pliers and start to wrap. I want to make sure you get that first wrap under the bottom of the loop. Wrap till there's no more room to wrap. I'm going to take my cutters and cut off my extra wire. I'm going to take my crimping pliers and tuck in my little burrs. And now I'm going to take, I should have looked to see what these, these are the, this is one of the two 18 by 17 by 3 millimeter golden alloy rhinestone heart pendants. That's what this is. So now I'm just going to take a little 4 millimeter jump ring. I can find the slit in it. Open it up. Thread on my little link that I made. And my little heart pendant. Close the jump ring back really well. Now I'm going to take my ear wire here and open it up and thread on my earring and I want to make sure to thread it the right way because these are not double sided. I'm going to close my ear wire back. So there's my little earring that matches nothing I've made today but <laughs> I just wanted to make it. So I'm going to make the other one off camera and then I'll see if I can get all this laid out. So I'll be back. Okay, there are my two super, super easy pendant necklaces and my pair of earrings that don't match anything <laughs> made with some of the beads and findings that came in my most recent GGC's treasure bag. I got the amber and aqua one. Like I said, her bags are just absolutely beautiful always. And they're such a great value. And uh, if you think you might want to get one the next time, it would be a good idea to go to her uh, website and get on her email notification list. And I'll put a link to her website and her YouTube channel in the description box below. I hope you all have enjoyed this video. As always, thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate those of you who have subscribed to my channel and watched my videos and liked and commented on my videos. I have a website where I sell my jewelry. I also sell gift cards and some extra beads and findings that I have. It's Teresa's Handmade Jewelry, and I'll put a link to it in the description box below in case you're interested, along with a link to my Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and my email. If you haven't, I'd really love it if you'd subscribe and hit the notification bell so you're notified when I upload a new video. So until next time, I hope you all have a great day. Take care.